Before we begin looking at the process of defining products and menu items, let's take a brief look at the restaurant point of sale screen. You'll notice that the menu is divided into 14 different tabs and each tab is color coded. Menus with no items are simply left blank. Each menu tab can display up to 35 entries on one page and using the page up and page down keys can support up to a thousand menu items on each tab of the menu. You have the ability to control and to specify what will appear as the text on each menu tab as well as to create and assign the menu buttons that will appear on each menu tab. When you assign items to your menus that's done again from the manager functions and is a two part process. The first step is to define your products and then the second step is to set up and arrange your menus and menu items. So we'll begin here by defining products. When you define products, again you'll have the option to add, modify, or delete as well as several other functions that are available for managing prices and managing some of the fields that you can use to categorize your products like department types, uh, departments or product types and departments, styles which typically will not be used in the restaurant because they're more applicable to a point of sale where you're selling clothing and those types of items. Uh, pick list groups which allow you to categorize and arrange your products again for the point of sale so typically will not be used. I would point out under product types that our software comes with several product types pre-installed. These product types are used on some of the reports that are generated from the restaurant manager reporting menu and so as much as possible it's a good idea to try to use these product types that are predefined in the software. Uh, if those product types are not sufficient you can add additional product types or remove some of those product types and some of the restaurant reports will reflect the product types that you have created. However, some will look for the predefined product types that are included with the software. Once you've set up your product types and the departments that you want to use to assist in your reporting, uh, you can then begin defining your products by selecting Add, Modify, or Deleting if you need to remove a product uh, that you've already created. Again, we'll begin by looking at the Modify function and looking at some of the basic products that uh, or some of the basic fields of information that are included for a product. When you define a product, you'll first be prompted to assign a product or service code as you define the new item. Uh, once the item has been entered, you'll have the option to enter a UPC code. The UPC code would be used primarily at the point of sale or for items that are barcoded. There is a function in the restaurant software that will let you scan a UPC code uh, if you want to sell things like bottles of sauce or hats or any of those types of things from your restaurant point of sale. So if you, if you want to be able to do that, you can put a UPC code here or scan a barcode that's already on a product here into the UPC code field. The next fields are the product description fields. Uh, the first the, the product description fields are the fields that will print on the customer's ticket uh, in reference to the items that he has purchased. Then you have the option of assigning a department or a product type. Uh, you'll notice here that we have a pick button which allows you to use a pick list to pick relevant items for any specific field. So for example we can use the pick button to pick a description or a, a department uh, as well as when we're in the product type field we can use the pick button to select the appropriate product type. In this case we'll just leave that assigned as food. The unit of measure represents the unit that you sell your product in and typically will be left as each is. This can be used in conjunction with product conversion information to help you do conversion from your vendor. We'll go over that in more detail in the uh, inventory module when we look at, at setting up food recipes and having it automatically pull raw materials based on food that you sell. Uh, unit weight typically is used in reference to shipping and so is generally not used in the restaurant software and in restaurant functions. When you are initially entering a product under the add function you can specify an initial quantity on hand. Once that initial quantity on hand has been entered and saved you'll then be required to maintain on hand levels by using the inventory management functions that are available in the software. Uh, reorder information is stored here as a reorder level and a maximum level. Once your on-hand inventory drops below your reorder level, the software will generate a reorder when you do automatic reorders that will uh, build your product back up to the maximum level. So for example, uh, in this situation, if we had an order level of 1 and a maximum level of 5, uh, then as soon as we generate automatic reorders, the software will look and say that we're 
minus 1 on hand, we want to have 5 on hand, and so it would order 6 items to bring us up to that 6 items on hand. Now you'll notice that the software does not require you to manage inventory and will allow you to sell items whether you currently have an on-hand quantity or not. Uh, some of the taxing and pricing information is available here. Uh, we have sales taxable, yes or no, to specify whether or not this is a taxable item. Uh, in some locations, uh, taxing is handled differently for dine-in versus down-out down, dine orders. Uh, in most places, the dine-in and dine-out would match uh, the sales taxable options. If this product requires a different tax rate, for example, uh, alcoholic beverages or some things like that that are taxed at a different rate, you can put that unique tax rate in this field as the unique tax percent. The bar tax percent is tied to a function in the miscellaneous definitions that allows you to enable an alternate tax on a station that is located at a bar. In some uh, locations, in some states, it's required to charge a different tax rate if an alcoholic beverage is purchased from a bar versus purchased uh, and brought to a table that you're sitting at. And so if that is the case, you would be able to put a, a different bar tax percent here. It's important to note that if you are using the bar tax functionality on a station that has bar tax enabled, all products need to have a tax rate assigned in the bar tax field because it will use zero as the tax rate if that's the value that is stored. The product service code allows you to specify whether this is a product that you sell or a service. The primary difference of course being that products are inventoried and services are not. Uh, and then you have cost information. This would be the default cost for this product each time that you sell it. When you sell and post your table sales at the end of the day, the software will determine an actual cost to use based on items that are stored in the inventory or based on the recipe module if you have defined recipes for this item. Uh, next we have the price levels. Price level 1 and price level 2 are assigned as default as the dine-in and dine-out pricing. Typically it's a good idea to make sure that both of those prices are filled out even if you don't plan on doing dine-out pricing. The other price levels, level 3, level 4, and level 5, can be assigned to customers. The software will allow you to specify a customer account or, to, or a customer uh, in the restaurant point of sale system, and if that customer is supposed to get different pricing because they're a corporate customer for whatever reasons, then it, you can use these price levels to assign uh, price levels that will be given to different customers. In pricing, we also have the ability to define several different pricing options, including happy hour price, lunch price and another price as well as prices specific to days of the week. All of these prices uh, can be specified as applicable during only specific hours on the days uh, where they're relevant. Happy hour price, lunch price can be specified as available on specific days and we'll look at that more when we get into the miscellaneous definitions. But all of those price options are available. On the second tab uh, we have fields that allow you to exclude an item from restaurant discount and to exclude an item from restaurant auto gratuity. A primary example of using these fields uh, is the products that are set up to sell gift cards or to sell or redeem gift certificates. If someone buys a $20 uh, gift certificate and then you discount the order for some reason, you don't want to discount the price they pay for that $20 gift certificate. Uh, likewise, if somebody redeems a gift card or redeems a gift certificate and you're using auto gratuity, uh, that money should not decrease the amount of gratuity or those payment methods should not decrease the amount of, of, uh, of the ticket that's used to calculate gratuity. So if you use either of these fields, they will be excluded from those functions in the restaurant software as it calculates totals. If you are paying commission to your employees and you want to pay uh, commission based on their profitability or their GPM on their sales, you can specify for this specific product what the GPM that will be used is. Lead time references how long it typically takes you to get this product from when you order it to when you have it on your shelves and is used for tracking purposes, as well as shelf life specifies how long the item is typically good for once it's on your shelf. This will be used in conjunction with the inventory module and there are shelf life reports which will show you items that are expiring and need to be gotten rid of. Uh, you have the option to specify whether or not you want to print a barcode for this item. Typically restaurant items will not have barcodes printed, but if you want to print your own barcodes to stick on merchandise items or those types of things, you can use our barcode printing module to do that. It will only print barcodes for items that are marked as yes. Uh, the default vendor that you order this product from would be placed as the reorder vendor 1 uh, and that is the vendor that automatic reordering will be done for. If you would like to track alternate vendors you can place those in the other vendor fields. 
if you are using the uh, goods tax or the GST tax, uh, which is required in Canada and also can be used in other areas to meet taxing requirements, and this product is subject to that tax, you would put a yes here under the goods taxable field. And finally here you have the option of specifying whether or not this product should be included in uh, loyalty discount calculations, meaning that purchase of this product would go towards loyalty uh, points if you're using the customer incentive programs. The size, style, and color are relevant for uh, retail type of items and you can specify uh, using our style modules which is available in the customer definitions. You can group products together by a style and then differentiate them based on their size and color. On the third tab, you have a general ledger sales account and cost of goods account. These fields will allow you to specify where sales and expenses for, the, for this food item uh, end up posting in your general ledger when you do your post table sales. We have volume quantity pricing available as well. This is not used in the restaurant software and so typically can be ignored, as well as the ability to assign pick list groups, which are used for looking up and, and arranging your items at the traditional point of sale. So again, uh, typically will not be used in the restaurant point of sale. The vendor conversion information lets you specify a unit of measure that you order a product from your vendor in as well as uh, the number of your units that are in one of his units. So if, for example, you were ordering uh, something that came uh, in bottles and you ordered it, or that, that you used in bottles but you ordered in cases, you could put cases, the conversion unit of measure, and then you could put uh, as the conversion number 12 if there were 12 bottles in the case. That would allow you then to have uh, specified that every time you receive one of these items from your vendor it turns into 12 in your inventory and the conversion ID would store his product ID uh, as the vendor that you're ordering it from. Default storage location is the default inventory location that you would like to store it in and then you have the option enter notes or product pictures. The fourth tab includes information that's relevant to uh, using the software for e-commerce and currently uh, is not applicable to the restaurant software. You can create new products by selecting Add from the main menu and defining the product information. You can also create new products uh, by saving a product that you're looking at or canceling a product that you're editing and then pressing the Add button. Again, you can navigate through your products using the navigation buttons. You can use the pick list to find a product. And again, using the F8 key to toggle between search orders, you can do a pick based on the product ID. You can do a pick based on uh, the description of the product or uh, other fields that are available. You will notice when you first start the software that there are several products that are predefined including products for redeeming and selling gift certificates, for selling gift cards, and for redeeming coupons. Uh, these products can be assigned to your menu and when assigned to your menu will then uh, perform specific functions when those items are sold. So you want to leave those products in there uh, and use those products, for example gift card if you are using our gift card module uh, and selling gift cards.